We're just going to go without slides. Um, so the title of the talk is Focus, Why Do I Need, need More Stinking Focus? Uh, the next slide, if it worked, would be a picture of an odometer. So picture that in your mind. We're going to do a little focus work here. Picture an odometer. Um, so this talk came about um, me trying to figure out how to integrate two parts of my life. So I have this Buddhist yoga meditation kind of woo-woo out there stuff and this other part of my life where I sit in front of a computer and I build websites and sell things on the internet. Um, so what I did is I'm like, I'm going to try and put these two things together and we'll see how it goes. So I'll let you guys, you guys can all let me know at the end of the talk how this goes. Um, so if you could see that, you would see my Twitter handle, which is just at my gayhard. One of the things I like to do in my spare time is rock climb. I also whitewater kayak. These are really good pictures, but you can't see them. Um, I also used to teach yoga and meditation. And of course, I developed software. So does anybody have any idea what do these, th these four things have in common? I gave you a hint at the beginning of the talk. Yay, you guys were paying attention. So yes, they all require different levels of focus. So picture yourself you know, 800 feet off the ground on the first flat iron, which is those big rocks that sit over Boulder. Um, and if you're not paying attention, things could get really ugly really quickly. Um, you know, whitewater kayaking. I'm upside down in a river. I've got my head bouncing off the bottom of the river with big rocks. I got to be kind of focused. Woo! All right, so we're going to go back because these pictures are really good. <laughs> so there's me. That is not me. <laughs> Yeah, so that is not me. I think that's Thailand. That is me, Upper Blue River, outside of Silverthorne. That's a super fun wave to surf, um, a yoga teacher. Uh, that is not me either. Uh, but that is my computer, yeah. I think I have more power in my pocket on my phone than that computer had, so. Why is focus so important? Anybody? Okay. Well. You sit at a computer all day and you're like, okay, well, I have the internet, so I have the whole world on my computer. I have Twitter, you know, I have Facebook. Heaven forbid you have this stuff turned on on your phone. I mean, you, does anybody get all those like 9,000 notifications on their phone? Like, how do you stay focused in today's world? You don't. Like, our world has not set us up for success with this stuff. So what do we end up doing? We're doing a bunch of multitasking. Does anybody know what multitask? Everybody, who multitasks in here? Who doesn't multitask? Liar. <laughs> Liar. There are actually studies that show we're actually becoming dumber because of our multitasking. Study scientific, like peer-reviewed journals. You ever have one of those days where you're kind of just like in this haze? You, know, you get to the end of the day and you're like, wow, I have, I have gotten nothing accomplished all day. Yeah. Anybody know why that is? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to move to the back, Wayne. Um, it's because we, we're constantly changing what we do. So this is your brain. Your brain is a computer. <laughs> Just like... Just like computers, does anybody know computers can only do one thing at a time? Yeah. You know how they do multiple things? They look like they do multiple things at a time? They do preemptive multitasking, thing called context switching. So you load the current context. You know, I'm surfing Twitter. I'm looking at Twitter. My boss comes up, and now I have to quickly hide said Twitter window and go back to work. So what do I have to do next? I have to load said new context. I then pour, perform, you know, maybe seven, eight minutes of work while he's walking through the office. Then I go back to Twitter. I have to unload all of that work stuff so I can, you know, start tweeting. I load the old context. I send out some tweets about Rocky Mountain Ruby or Jessica Simpson or, you know, name your favorite celebrity. And they say, 20 to 40% of your productivity is lost to context switching. So you want to do the math on that, a typical eight-hour day, how much time do you lose? <laughs> Jeremy says four hours. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's got his computer up, and he's context switching, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 
So what is that, 1.6 to 2.4 hours a day? 2.4, is that right? 3.2 hours a day, thank you. Um, so that's a lot of time. You know, you always wonder why computer, you know, computer people are working 10, 12 hours a day. Think, if you, only, if you did eight hours of work a day, you wouldn't have to work 11 hours a day because you're surfing Twitter for the other 3.2 hours. Um, so how do we counteract this stuff? We have a blank slide. So we practice focus. How many people practice focus? All right, sweet, not enough, unfortunately. At the end of this talk, you will all be practicing focus. In my world, that equates to sitting meditation. What do other people use? Maybe use Pompadouro. That's a method of practicing focus. Some people resort to illicit drugs. In, but in Boulder, it's not illicit anymore as long as you have a prescription. Does anybody know there are more dispensaries in Denver than there are Starbucks? So. Just a little Colorado. If that doesn't want to make you move to Colorado, we should talk. <laughs> that is true. Um, so in the great world, words of Walt Disney, you know, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. So I'm going to ask everybody to close their computers and sit on the edge of their chair. So yes, we are going to meditate. If this scares the crap out of you, don't worry. No one will steal your wallet. I will make sure of that. And if they do, I get 50%. Yeah, so just slide to the end of your seat, both feet on the ground, sit up nice and tall, and close your eyes. And you're going to simply begin by taking three deep breaths in and out through your nose. And when you're done with those three deep breaths, you're simply going to begin to count to 10. Everybody can count to 10. If you can't, we should talk. And you're going to simply count to 10. What happens when you get to 10? You start again at 1. And you're going to you know, keep doing this. And I will let you know when you are all enlightened. So simply allow your mind to focus on the counting. It's not important. It's just giving you something to do while you meditate. If you lose count, just start again at one. Not a big deal. No one's going to come around and slap your wrists. Now gently begin to release your focus on the counting, and as you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Those of you that were on the computers can go back to what you were doing. Those that were listening can actually. So how does everybody feel? Does it feel like that? Stars. Does everybody feel a little more focused? That was like three minutes of meditation. How many people thought, how many people actually got to 10 in three minutes? That's how I was when I first started. You get to like four and you're like, oh, what's he going to talk about next? Oh, do I have an email coming into my inbox? Um, so yeah, so just a quick recap. 
you gotta find a place that you can't be disturbed. It's a little weird meditating in a room of you know 200 and some rubyists, but whatever. Sit up straight wherever you're comfortable. So a lot of people like meditation sitting on the floor, like legs bent over their head. Sit in a chair for Christ's sakes. Just sit where you're comfortable, where you can sit up nice and straight. Start a timer. You're not, then you're not wondering like, ooh, has that been seven minutes? Am I at eight minutes? When you're actually at like three minutes. Close your eyes. Take three or four depth, deep breaths through the nose. You want to settle yourself into the meditation. You're like, okay, here I am. I'm meditating. We're good to go. And then you count to 10. You can count to 20. You can count to 7. You can count to 9. I don't care. Just count to something. And we get to whatever number you've chosen. Start over. And if you get distracted, just start at 1. So super simple. This is not, you know, we're not doing all kinds of crazy stuff here. So a lot of people have seen Ruby Cohen's. Thanks to the Edge Cakes folks for those. Um, so people are like, how do I get better at meditation? Just do it. Um, it's kind of like I once had a meditation teacher tell me that reading about meditation and expecting to get good at meditation is like reading a cookbook and expecting to your belly to be filled. So you just have to do this. Um, this is your brain again. Um, another important thing about meditation, does anybody know right versus left brain? Yeah, so you've got two sides of your brain. They operate differently. Um, the right brain, also called the rich brain, is responsible for creativity, synthesis ideas, and figuring things out. And I always forget that that's the last bullet item. So does anybody think that this might be useful in software development? Show of hands, please. Oh, yeah, everybody, show of hands, please. If you're not, then I don't want to talk to you later. Um, we also have the linear brain, also called the left brain, which is good for analysis, taking things apart, making things happen. Also, kind of useful for software development. Um, so there's practice focus equals meditation. People are like, okay, how does this apply to software? Meditation allows the rich brain to get some playing time. So your linear, very analytical brain is pretty much running your life you know, for a lot. Anybody disagree with that? So what are you doing? You're like getting in the car, you're writing software, you're figuring out what you're gonna have for breakfast. It's very linear, it's very analytical. So if you sit, did anybody notice that as they were sitting and trying not to think about counting to 10, they were having some really cool ideas? It's kind of like when you get in the shower. You've ever been in the shower and been like, that's how I solved that problem, the one you've been working on for like three days at the office? And we think why that is? It's right-brained. You're taking a shower. You take a shower every morning. Your left brain is worried about soaping yourself up and rinsing yourself off. It's, it's preoccupied. And the rich brain is like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. I get some playing time. Let's try and figure out this problem. It just magically happens. So I'm going to give you a little challenge. Everybody's like 10 minutes. Uh, start with five if you have to. I'm not asking you to sit for 10 minutes. Try this three days a week. And I want you to tweet about it. Uh, that slide is not right. Um, we're going to use the hashtag um, hash devmed, D-E-V-M-E-D. -E -E so every morning when you sit and meditate, I just want you to say, I meditated this morning, and put it the hashtag on Twitter, and we'll see how many people are meditating. I apologize for the craziness of these slides. Um, not to be confused with self-dev medication. Um, so some credits. If you kind of like that rich brain, linear brain kind of thinking type stuff, awesome book by the Pragmatic Programmers, guys. This is a really cool book. It's not only like how to develop better softwares, but really how to pre reprogram your brain. Um, all of my teachers over the years, so I've had meditation teachers, the guy that pisses me off at the, like, the traffic light, one of my teachers, it's kind of interesting, um, and Flickr for all the wonderful pictures. Does anybody have any questions? So there's a lot going on. I'm more than happy to talk about this in more detail with people, but I do want to make sure that everybody's kind of clear on what's going on. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure, yeah.
Yeah. Oh, so the question was, could it be that the, while you're figuring that stuff out in the shower, it's because you've processed it all night? Sure. If you shower in the morning, but anybody showered at night and had one of those things? So yeah, it's not just because, I mean, there's a lot of factors to that. It's not, I'm not saying meditation is going to cure everything. Um, I choose it as a good start. So any other questions? Okay. So in line with what Marty said, um, yes. So if you haven't heard, Living Social is going to open up a Boulder engineering office. So if anybody's looking to work for Living Social, there are a handful of us running around um, in shirts. Please do come talk to us. Um, if you're interested in doing Rails, Ruby, we got some Scala guys. Um, we got some PHP guys in South Korea. I'm not quite sure how they fit into the picture, but. Um, yeah, please do come talk to us. You do not have to move to DC. You can work here, live here in Boulder. The office is right across the street from Starbucks on the mall, where I think we're moving in in a couple of weeks. Um, cool. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to turn the microphone over to Mr. Michael Feathers, I believe, is next.